Hey, you want to go behind the scenes to see what gear we actually use to make this record? I'm Andrew Collier from Circuline, and this is the gear behind the music. Hi, I'm Andrew Collier from Circuline, and for this gear behind the music video, I want to talk about Moog. Not Moog, but Moog. Here's the Moog DFAM. Here is the Moog Mother 32. Here's the Moog Siren. Here's the Moog Subharmonicon. Here's the Moog Werkstatt that I used on tour with Robert Berry's 3.2 band, reproducing some of this super cool Keith Emerson stuff. And what really helped to make this awesome are the pedals. I wanna talk about Moog pedals and what I use on this record. Here's a Moog Mini Foger Boost pedal. But really, this delay pedal, thank you so much to Adam Holdsman who gave me some delay tips, the way that he uses delay pedals with his Moog Voyager. And for the Robert Berry 3.2 tour, I would run this Moog Vergstock through this delay pedal. Now for Circuline, I didn't use this on this record. One thing you have seen Moog to do with Circuline in the past is here's our Moog Taurus 3 bass pedals. Uh, we use these on this record and we will be using them again when we play live and you'll be seeing them and hearing them again in the future. And I also wanna show you, I also wanna show you this Moger Foger ring mod pedal with the pedal you definitely hear this on this record. I used it on a couple cool tracks and you'll hear it. You'll hear it on the song You and you'll hear it on a couple of other songs because these things make sounds that nothing else makes. So it's super cool. Moog synthesizers, Moog pedals, Moog effects. Special shout out to Jason Daniello at Moog Music who is our artist relations rep. Thank you, Jason. I love being a Moog artist. Also, please support the Moog Foundation. Michelle Moog Kusa is in charge of that. They help to carry on the legacy of Bob Moog with educational programs in schools and all kinds of super cool things. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next segment. Hi, this is Darren from Circuline. I'm here in the studio talking to you about some of the equipment that was used on our third record and second record and the first record. And in this case, this is my drums, the Yamaha drums. I've had these for probably 20 years or so. I actually have been kind of slowly uh, replacing one drum at a time here. So I got uh, four new Yamaha drums. They've been with me for a long time and I'm very pleased. Uh, I'm not one of these people that really know the actual kind of you know composition of the shells. All I know is they sound great. They sound great on all three of our records. So please check them out. Okay. These I'm actually really serious about. I love these. What are these? West Tone Inner Ear Monitors. Now look at that. I want you to notice that. It was made for my ear. And the dude doing the sizing, doing the measuring and all that, said I had very dainty inner ears. The only dainty part of me, like, ever. <laughs> I love these. Game changer. Hello, this is Shelby from Circuline, and in this episode of Gear Behind the Music, I'm going to talk about the strings that I've got going on my bass behind, my bass is behind me. Um... Starting off from my oldest bass, the PV Grind BXP5, uh, the strings on there have been on there for many, many years, to the point where they're actually in dire need of being changed. But um, it'll hold for now. And I think there are a set of Daddario strings that I got ages ago. Um, no, I don't think I even got them. I think I found them. I think uh, Joey... Uh, from Kairos, I think he left behind some bass strings, and I was like, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna nab those, <laughs> and I'm gonna just put them on my bass, and they've been on there for about three or four years now, um, does the job, works well, so I stuck with it, with it, up until I got, um, up until I got the ding wall, now the Dingwalls had an interesting story behind it when it comes to the strings, as interesting as you can get when it comes to talking about strings. When I first got the bass from the bass gallery in London, I found that immediately I wanted to get a fresh set of strings on because who knows how long that bass had been sat in that shop for and also I don't know whose grubby fingers had been playing on that bass, so I just wanted to put a fresh set on. So there and there and in the shop I picked up a set of the Dario strings and got home and immediately changed out the strings and I found a glaring problem. Um, 
I did talk about this briefly in a previous episode, but you'll notice how the string length on this lower, on the lower string, on the E string, because of the fact that it's a fan fret bass and that uh, it frets outwards uh, on the lower strings, you see how that low string is, is significantly longer than the upper string. Uh, so I found that the Daddario strings that I put on were not long enough. They wouldn't, they wouldn't fit on. It would reach, it would, like the, the, these three strings would be fine, but the low string wouldn't reach without it, like, it just wouldn't sit right. As in where it tapers at the end before it um, gets thin and then wraps around, coils around the, the tuning head, um, the machine head, it would taper like way over here, like way, way over here before even like the nut before this bit here and I had like it would just like it would vibrate and buzz in the most horrendous way because of the fact that it was tapering so the string was low lower than it should be and rubbing up against the the, the frets so I what I had to do for about a couple of weeks before I eventually got these strings was I put a piece of paper underneath the low string to try and have it sit above the nut slightly higher <laughs> the things we do until i eventually got these strings and i thought you know what i'm not even going to risk it so i just got the dingwall branded strings which i think also like i think they're made by payson originally and they're just rebranded as dingwall strings uh i might be wrong i don't know if anyone can correct me on that but yeah these are just dingwall branded strings I've had these exact same strings on since about two weeks after I got this bass, which was summer last year, summer of 2022. And yeah, these are the same strings that I've had on this bass for about 14 months now. And it still sounds really good. It still sounds really like... Still sounds fresh, still sounds fine. I do want to change it because like there's an ever so slight like I can hear it's ever so slightly dim than it used to be but relatively speaking compared to especially compared to the PV it still sounds fresh and I don't know yeah maybe it's because it's Dingwall branded strings maybe it's because of the bass that it's sat on but it just sounds incredible one thing I should mention actually uh, I always choose to go for a thinner gauge of string, much to the behest of other bass players. Uh, most bass players would opt for a, a gauge that would cr would give them more low end to really fill out the low end spectrum because it's a bass. But I kind of choose the opposite. Most bass players would opt to choose for um, a set of strings that would give them a nice balanced low end and high end. And a lot of bassists tend to choose thicker strings that will give them a nice big low end. But I go for the opposite choice, which is thinner gauge strings that give me a lot of high end. So on a bass that already is very much known for the high end tone and twang and uh, crispness that you can get out of it because of the fan fret system, I wanted to step it up even further. And I've got low strings on here that enable me to do all sorts of wacky stuff like, like like really bend the string, really get in in there. And it's just a lot of fun. I love the way thinner strings feel under my fingers. I'm not used to playing a bass this way. <laughs> I'm much more used to playing it this way, but it's off the frame this way. So that's why I'm holding it this way. Yeah, thinner gauge strings. And that goes for pretty much all my basses. So this gives pretty convincing 12-string uh, sounds. At the moment I've just got it going through a, like an electric guitar model, so it's not ideal, but um, it does sound pretty good. <laughs> And the amazing thing about this, the Variax, is um, like if I flick this switch here, I can go from acoustic sounds to, um, let's see, something like a Strat. And 
And then um, the other thing, uh, which I know Nick uh, used this for when he was using the 12 string sounds, because he's still got on the top here, I don't know if you can see, uh, obviously one of the tunings he was using was, was this. Uh, for one of the Steve Hackett tracks, not sure which track, but you can actually tune this um, to different tunings, which is very useful. So that's tuned to a major chord. And this, the selector switch, just acts as a uh, kind of a switch for choosing different presets. These are all just different tunings. Which is very clever. So, uh, yeah, it's a very versatile instrument, this one that I haven't used very much because um, uh, I've been in America most of the time, this has been in England. But whenever I get over here, I'm going to try using this a lot more. Great instrument. Hi, this is Andrew Collier from Circuline, and I'm, oh my, I don't even know what, what am I saying? What am I, I don't even know what I'm saying. What am I actually supposed to be saying here? So Bob Moog was the man who basically invented and helped to popularize commercially. You know what, it doesn't really matter, but everybody knows who, they, who he is. Anyway, just, oh, just fucking talk. This is super cool. You hear this on this right, this is a funny looking face here. Uh, I don't think I can get up now, I'm on the floor, <laughs> I'm holding the phone. Anyway, uh, maple shells, I hope. Oops. You might want to cut say, that. Say every, well, you're gonna okay, it. I can cut well, that. How okay. many different shells are there? Ape, oh. Well, there's maple. I, I don't see. That's the thing. I don't. I'm not the typical drummer oh, here. Okay. I don't know. Like, oh, what's your guy? Funny. What's the guy with 3.2? Oh, Jimmy. He knows. I, I go. I, I oh. can't store that information. <laughs> I, I can't do it. Um, you could say you could say you actually would be funny. You say I don't even know what the shells are. I love how they sound. Yeah, and you, I mean, okay. and you could be like I just can't. I you hear pumpkin howling? Pumpkin, what are you doing? He's being a little nuisance. Yeah. Um, the strings, you can hear pumpkin meowing in the background because he just wants to ruin all my shots. Um, disturb my train of thought. Yes.